Let's go out to Eugene, Oregon. The Ducks are making some noise on a bye week. Oregon looking for some key flips just this weekend. Las Vegas offensive lineman Douglas Utu started trending to Oregon. The thing is, he's committed to Tennessee. Steve, you put in a prediction for a flip here. What are you hearing? Well, working that story with my colleague Chad Simmons, we're hearing that Oregon is the program that's gaining a lot of momentum behind the scenes for the Bishop Gorman offensive lineman who Oregon covets as an offensive tackle. Mm -hmm. That's the position he wants to play on the next level. When David Sanders Jr. committed to Tennessee, that's when Oregon really ramped it up and went in hard on Utu, trying to show him that he's the number one player at that position on their board. The offensive line is a key spot for Oregon this year. They're going to lose six of their top players on the depth chart following this season. Six of their top seven players will be gone. So there's an opportunity for players like Utu to come in and play right away. They view him as an instant impact guy, same as they do with Dimitri Manning and potentially Zayari Addison. Oregon also has Utu's teammate, Ale Kalanivalu, committed, but he's expected to go on a mission. So we kind of put him in the 2027 class. So offensive line, huge need for Oregon this cycle. And uh, at the end of the week, Oregon was a program that had a lot of buzz for Douglas Utu. Josh Heupel and company aren't going to lay down and just let them roll out to Eugene, though. And these two programs have already had some epic battles on the trail this cycle. Tennessee won the last one, flipping Deshaun Brame from mm. Oregon. Oregon trying to return the favor with Douglas Utu. Yeah, you see these uh, these recruiting battle lines being drawn now. Oregon is also making some noise with an Alabama commitment. Five-star corner Dijon Lee, he admits, hey, I've been talking to Oregon. So, Steve, what does it mean that Dijon Lee and Oregon have open lines of communication? Should Alabama fans be concerned here? Well, Oregon was just on a bye week this past week, and Dan Lanning was out in California extending new offers, shaking some trees on 2025s committed elsewhere. And Dijon Lee's a prospect that they're not going to go away on. And Josh, we talk about this all the time. The recruiting season has its has its phases, and there's going to be one more phase here in November, the final offer phase. And how how was your season? How is your depth chart shaping up? Who are you going to go hard on at the end of the cycle? And is that an opportunity? that is going to make someone think twice about their first decision. And Oregon is keeping Dijon Lee warm and vice versa. And we'll see where that one continues. But Dijon, you know, he chose Alabama over Georgia the first time. And there was times where Georgia had some buzz, but I think ultimately Alabama led for most of his process and he committed to the tide. And I view that right now as, as a tough flip. But Oregon and Dan Landing and company, they're going to try and get at, get a seat at the table there at the end and see what happens. Hmm. All right. Uh, can I take a stab at naming the recruiting seasons? Yeah. All right. So January to February, we got early offer season. March, a little bit into April, we got early commit season. May is eval season. June is visit season. July is commit season. August is, let me get this decision done before my season starts season. Then we got early offer season, which is like the first three, four weeks of the high school season. Uh, then we get into decommit season, which generally happens in November, coaching changes. Then we get into flip season, which is de December. Did I do it? Did I hit it? All of them? Yeah, except flip season moves up because the early signing period is now December 4th. Yeah, instead yeah of you're right. So November, 21st. December is going to be decommit right. and flip season all in all. Yeah, in so season. we'll see how rushed that gets in November where teams are trying to finish strong, clinch a college football playoff spot, and also get their players signed by t December 4th. It'll be interesting. But you can't have flip season without commit season. Right. Commit season already happened. Spatula season is coming. Come, coming soon. All right. Now, no, momentum is building with Oregon. We've been talking on and off, you know, at different times they seem hot, they seem not. But now that we can see kind of the finish line in the distance here, do, do the Ducks have a shot to close strong in 2025? 
Yeah, they're looking for a second straight top five class, and they're one of the programs that's going to try and swing the heavy spatula over the next couple months. They're going to want another offensive lineman. If they're able to land Douglas Utu, they're going to want another offensive lineman. Zach Stiskowski is uh, from Portland, currently committed to Washington. They offered him. They got the full, port, full court press going there. They want another linebacker. Dan Lanning in California this week. Noah McHale is a top target, currently committed to Texas A&M. Caleb Burns is an on 300 linebacker from Texas. That's a verbal to Baylor that's excited about his new opportunity from Oregon. Oregon doesn't have a tight end in the fold. Vander Plug's committed to Washington. That's mm -hmm. someone that they're really pushing for this season. They continue to have dialogue with five-star Lincoln Kerr, probably a long shot for the Kansas State commit but the phone lines are still warm there between Oregon and Lincoln Cure. And then they're, look, on 300 edge rusher Hayden Lowe's committed to USC. Dan Lanning saw him when he was on the road last week. So uh, your commits are not safe when with, with Oregon in the picture, and they're going to be looking for a lot of flips over the next two months. Oregon fans, how you feeling about this run to signing day? Let us know who's the big flip on your radar. Comment section below.